Good evening and welcome to the best evening talk show in the capital. The Dish is the name of the show. My name is Miriam Uduak Mensa, your host. We're coming to you live from our studios, MX24, uh, Oli the Streets, East Ligon, Accra. This season promises to be even more exciting, engaging, thought-provoking uh, debates and empowering insight on the issues that matter most to the women and development. Of course, join us as we continue to amplify women's voices, challenge the status quo, and speak meaningful ch uh, spark meaningful challenge as well. Uh, now we're here and we're all set for another season of Real Talk with progressive women who are making a real impact. Okay, but before we get into that conversation, hey guys, let's talk about something we all want, success. Everybody wants it, everybody dreams of it. We all aspire to succeed and make a mark in life. We push ourselves to excel, enduring challenges along the way just to be successful. Charlie, when, it, when the work gets tough, and I bet it definitely will, you need that extra boost to keep pushing forward. And on those days where you need someone to be there for you, Cowbell Coffee will be by your side. Yes, it's a rich creamy three in one blend with a great taste and aroma that will aid kickstart your day. Whether you are working on or just creating memories with friends and loved ones, Cowbell Coffee will be there with you every moment. So no matter where you are, at, uh, as you chase after those goals, keep Cowbell Coffee close uh, to you, stay, to stay motivated and going. Remember, Cowboy Coffee is with you every moment. Again, my name is Miriam. And yes, get ready for a conversation that informs, inspires, and ignites change. Today, today's conversation promises to be even more dynamic and engaging. Exchange of ideas and packed with valuable insight uh, and interactive moments. And of course, meaningful uh, takeaways that will leave a lasting impact. Let me uh, remind you that this conversation or this show is very interactive. So we're going to be doing this with you. You're telling us, we're telling you, you're asking us, we're, remind, we're, we're responding to your questions. So just uh, drop those messages on all our social media platforms. It's MX24GH uh, on all social media platforms. And don't forget to add the hashtag, hashtag the dish on MX24. Join us for a dynamic, dis dynamic discussion, sorry, that inspires and ignites change. Today, we're talking promoting healthy menstrual hygiene. And today's conversation, of course, is going to be very, very, very impactful. Uh, and that is, is going to bother on women. And so, as we said, the show is for women. Today, uh, in our topic that we're going to touch on today, this morning or this evening. Ah, I definitely wasn't going to say morning. <laughs> this evening is uh, one that I am very passionate about. Uh, we are definitely going to be making sure that we touch on every aspect and facet of the conversation. Okay. Now, if you're ready with me, I was born ready. Uh -huh. Are you ready? Now, as we navigate uh, the 21st century, um, it's surprising that menstruation remains a taboo. Uh, it's a subject that lead into uh, inadequate access to sanitary products, insufficient education, and alarming health disparities globally. From grassroots initiatives to groundbreaking innovative uh, innovation, sorry, we'll delve into the advancements and challenges in menstrual health awareness and hygiene practices, and also explain or explore the cultural and societal barriers that uh, perpetuate menstrual stigma, impact of limited access to menstrual um, products on individuals, communities, and the environment at large. Join us as we uh, confront the uncomfortable truth and celebrate the trailblazers working tirelessly to re Revolutionize, revolutionize menstrual health management. Let's break the silence, shatter the stigma, and pave the way for a future where every individual can menstruate with dignity and confidence. Joining me for this conversation this evening is Dr. Vanessa Mensa Kabu, medical doctor, MPH founder, first aid on uh, wheels. First aid on wheels. And also uh, joining us is Miss Rebecca Osam, CEO, Reflo Company Limited. Yes, I know you've heard about it. You've seen it everywhere. She is here in the studio with us. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Good evening. And I kept doing the morning thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> I warned myself, but it didn't work. Good evening, Good evening ladies. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. How are you doing? 
It's fine, thank you. It's really good Very to see well. you. And I was telling you earlier, what you do is absolutely amazing. And we, we doff you. our cup for you. I agree. <laughs> totally. <laughs> good totally job, good job, good job on what you're doing. <laughs> you. Doc, yes. you have been here. I Television have. loves you. Well, thank you. Yes, yes, television you. loves you. Cameras <laughs> love you. <laughs> thank you. It's good to see you. It's, it's good, good to see you. See now, ladies, um, like we said earlier, listen, this conversation is one that we cannot have enough of. Mm -hmm. um, we we're discussing earlier that, listen, we cannot even use one year mm -hmm. to, to, to have that conversation. We can't even use one month to have yeah. that conversation enough. It's, it's a broad conversation that That's we're looking true. at maybe in a, in a couple of years, say three or four years, with what you do, mm -hmm. we, will, we, will, we, would, we would have done a great job just cutting out this, the stigma and all the conversation, the yeah. negative conversations around yes. menstrual yeah. hygiene. But let's, let's go straight into it. Doc, I'm going to start with you. Okay. What are some of the persisting um, issues around um, menstrual hygiene that you've come across in, your, in all your many years of practice? Well, thank you, Rebecca, and thank you for having me on the show. Mm. Good evening to each and every person watching and listening to us. So um, menstrual hygiene, simply some of the issues that we've had to deal with is borderlines on the lack of education mm -hmm. um, because some people are not aware of when their menstruation starts mm -hmm. or even when it starts, they don't know how to go about the challenges or difficulties associated with the menstruation, such as maybe the very painful menstruation, mm -hmm how long it's going to last for the heavy menstrual bleeding that a lot of women actually tend to have. So these are some of the things that we, we try to tackle in our consulting rooms and also do a lot of awareness creation on. So, I so mean, heavy menstrual bleeding, mm -hmm. um, dysmenorrhea, that mm -hmm. is painful menstruation, yes. when the menstruation starts, when it's expected to end, mm -hmm. and basically keep in a hygienic environment during that time of the month. One would wonder, 21st century, 2024. <laughs> so I think it's the part of the world as well that we're in. And mm. I think it's catching up, but it's yeah. taken a while. And I think um, in the West, for example, um, talking about menstruation is very normal. Yeah. Very, very normal. They encourage uh, children to talk to their parents about it, mm -hmm. parents to talk to their, their children about it. It's everywhere. And mm -hmm. it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's made, women, women are made to feel comfortable about being women. Yeah. And I think it's something that we need to work on here. But I think, you know, over the years from the past, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stigma here. Yes. There are lots of, you can't talk about it. It's all hush hush, it's dirty, <laughs> it's this. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to put a stop to that because it's a natural thing yeah. that, you know, from a girl to a woman, it's, it's, a, it's, a, that it's something that has to happen. Yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you. So <laughs> I think we need to normalize that. My first time seeing Reflo on, I think it was on social media. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is good. But would we be able to sustain this? Again, as a young girl who has, start, who has tried starting business <laughs> in Ghana, ladies, I, I feel your pain from afar. Because I don't know how you've done this. How yeah. long have you been doing this? Uh, we, we opened the company 10 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's but I would, say, I would say we started properly about three years ago. Three, three years, and a half ago. years ago. Yes. Right. So we let's started about three times. So Oh <laughs> so, you Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> you're not talking about the challenges that you face yeah. trying to I mean oh. it's crazy. Mm. You know, you're on your own out here. <laughs> so it is. Yeah. So it's basically, you know, you have to you have to I feel like you have to go through these struggles. Mm, mm. If you don't then you won't know what not to do. Yeah. You know, no one's gonna teach you. Even if, even if someone gave you the blueprint, yeah. you're still gonna have, make your own mistakes and you're gonna have your own challenges, but you just have mm -hmm. to just not give up. That's that's it. You just have to. Before going, we so. get into the health implications and all the <laughs> yeah. all the health health issues around menstrual, what made you start Reflow in the first place? So um, we started with diapers, and oh. um, for me, I just I just when I went to make manufacture them, they they were telling me that I should just make anything, any quality. It's Africa, as long as it's cheap and affordable. They just they like cheap things. That's what they keep they kept saying. <laughs> And I just, I was, I was, I found that really disturbing mm -hmm. <laughs> that, um, especially me being an African, being told that to my face, it, it just made me think that obviously others have come here and they've gone with this mm -hmm. scenario mm -hmm. to make profit. Fine, it's business, I understand that. But um, I couldn't make something that I wouldn't use myself. So I made the diapers. I said, okay, we're going to make the best diaper ever, ever. you know, mm -hmm. and we did that. And then when it came to the sanitary pads, I was like, well, I, I haven't even found a pad here that I would use myself, that I would be happy or comfortable using. So 
we said, okay, we're going to make a pad then, of course. Again, we have to make the best pad mm -hmm. possible. We want to feel, it's about the feel, how you want to feel at that time of your month. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, you know, it's, it's something that can stop you mm -hmm. from having a good day, a productive day. Mm -hmm. um, you could go to a great job and you could, your, your mens menstrual cycle that day mm -hmm. could help you lose your job. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> could so, help you lose your job. Yes. <laughs> it's, Make it it's, easier. It's that, mm. it's that, it's it's that difficult at times. So mm. um, at least if we're going to make <laughs> the thing that can make you feel as comfortable as possible. If we can make you feel as comfortable as possible, then at least you can feel like that day, maybe apart from maybe a couple of cramps that you might take some painkillers mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. at least in that area, you can feel like yeah. you're, you're having covered. a normal day. <laughs> yes, yes. And so that was the aim. That was the motivation. Yeah. Yeah, because you didn't go with the, the flow of just make anything for Africa. No mm. way. Mm. I, I can't do that. makes that. you a really good person, I, I think. I and agree. I believe that, that I that's, yeah. But I mean, this is where we're from. Yeah. If we don't stand up for ourselves, then who else? Who so, will? Absolutely. You know, we can't make, our, we cannot give to ourselves mm -hmm. something that is less than standard, you know. Yeah. So if I'm making it for us, mm -hmm. we have to make it for us. Mm -hmm. Not for me to make money. It's not, you know. Mm -hmm. That's Love not the that. only goal. So. Now, if you're watching, there's a woman talking. If, if <laughs> and, and that's coming from the, yes. the place of mm -hmm. a woman with the kind of heart that we carry, mm -hmm. with the kind of empathy yeah. that yeah. we're built with. It's inbuilt. You cannot... Yes. You, you struggle to do wicked things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if a woman who has that tendency is mm -hmm. that, you, nah, no, your problem is yeah. than this. <laughs> we cannot help you over here on the show. Okay, we cannot help you. <laughs> now, let, you talked about um, one, an aspect that really um, you cannot help which is the cramps. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're helping with the quality um, sanitary parts, but when it comes to the other side mm. of menstruation, which is innate, you cannot help. So we're going to move to yeah. dog. <laughs> what are the best, best practices to keep a very great, um, uh, you know, menstrual hygiene? Considering all the dynamics, you know, yes. some people have very good menstrual cycles, like, you know, it comes seven days, it's gone, no pain, they're moving <laughs> freely. Others, they have to be hospitalized. I, I actually recently heard a story of a young lady that is battling to have kids now because yeah. when she was growing up, she had very, very terrible menstrual cycle. Yeah. Like, she has to be hospitalized the entire yeah. time. Her yeah. seven days, she's in the yeah. hospital mm -hmm. and she comes back. It's every month she's in the hospital for seven days. And it, it looked unreal to me, but this was her story. Mm. And so eventually they had to go and operate on her. Mm -hmm. And right after that operation, oh, she stopped them bleeding completely. Mm. <laughs> she stopped bleeding completely. Wow. Now, with all these struggles, how best can we handle this phase of a woman? Well, it's, it's, it's a very dicey place to be because each menstruation per individual is unique. And I can't say I experience the same menses as you do because the dynamics are completely different. So what I would say is to be able to understand your body, know your body best. And if it becomes a little too much, mm -hmm. visit your healthcare facility. Mm -hmm. Because indeed, there are women that actually have underlying health conditions that is causing them mm -hmm. to have this severe, painful, painful. menstruation or even heavy bleeding. Mm -hmm. um, visit your healthcare provider who would investigate further to understand what may be the cause of these symptoms. However, for very mild cramping that you may have at any point in time. You can always get some off-the-counter medications to help. Um, unfortunately, I can't mention them on mm -hmm. air, yes. But you can always get some off-the-counter medications mm -hmm. that can help um, for a few days mm -hmm. so that you can navigate the process of painful menstruation. Mm -hmm. But if it's so severe, because there are some that become very crippling, you can't mm -hmm. even walk, you can't do anything, please visit a healthcare provider mm -hmm. and then have, um, have be properly assessed mm -hmm. and we would understand why maybe you're having these symptoms mm -hmm. as opposed to having a, a freer or an easier menstruation. menstruation. Yeah. I think diet can also help, can't it? You know, also drinking so. lots of water. Yes, the diet mm -hmm. definitely can help. Mm -hmm. So um, having a good diet, do that towards that period. Hydration is very essential because yeah. it helps to loosen up the cramping. Yeah. But as it's always important to visit your healthcare provider, provider just so that you can be you know, absolutely mm -hmm. sure that there isn't an underlying absolutely. condition mm -hmm. that is causing the symptoms. All the other things are just a plus. It will stay with the underlying condition a little bit. Yes. So for some people, it's a, it, it's, they never have cramps until they have children. And then it starts, like it's a new phase mm -hmm. of their life. They begin to mm -hmm. have cramps. Mm -hmm. For others, too, they have it. And then once and then they have kids, children, it's after that. Yes. What, 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 how so, does that play? <laughs> menstruation is basically hormonal. Mm -hmm. 
So hormones change each and every time the cycle begins. And then with the underlying conditions such as um, polycystic ovarian syndrome, uterine fibroids, um, ovarian cysts, these are some of the things that can cause painful menstruation and an imbalance in the hormones in the body. So these tend to cause the significant pain and sometimes heavy menstruation that's the women mm. experience. So yeah. it's, it's completely hormonal. It's, it's it not is. that it's in anything special that's happening right after the kids. No, it's children. hormonal. Mm. Having kids is hormonal. Mm. Every single thing during that period is basically hormonal. hormonal. Yes. And, there's and also can... environmental factors tend mm -hmm. to play a significant role. You'd have women mm. who say they've maybe traveled and they've experienced lighter menstruation or heavier menstruation. Mm. Your dietary intake can also mm. play a significant role. Exercising can also play a significant role in that. Is that so? Yes. Now, with the, with the medications, you mentioned mm -hmm. that if it's not that you know, crazy, counter, if it's not crippling, you can, you can take yes. some. Yes. Some people know mm -hmm. that, listen, it's not that bad, but I don't like the discomfort. So they take it like every single day of the menstruation. And I also heard of a story of a mm -hmm. young lady who, when, once she takes in the painkiller, the menstruation stops. So what's your advice for that intake of... Some people just abuse the drugs. Like, yes, some, some people, I agree. Some people just abuse the drugs simply because of the fear of having, mm -hmm. going through that process. Yeah. And it's completely understandable. Mm -hmm. But then there are also complications associated with abusing medication. Mm -hmm. You are looking at... Um, chronic, um, maybe your kidneys would get mm. affected, your moods can get affected, your livers can get affected. So it's very important that you don't abuse medication. It's always good to read the manufacturer's manual to understand what you're taking. And also, don't listen to what people are taking for themselves. Some people would go to the hospital and be given a certain medication and then they would want to recommend that same medication to someone mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. without properly understanding what the person is going through. So medication sharing shouldn't be something that we should encourage mm -hmm. or even consider doing. So if you're someone that likes to say, oh, I went to the hospital, mm -hmm. I was having the same symptoms, the doctor gave me this, so maybe you can also take the same mm -hmm. thing. It's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I have done that before. Because, I mean, mine was really painful. And, mm. and so I just said, you I know. I mean, it, it's completely understandable. Mm. It comes from a place of care and yeah. consent. Yeah. Because but you don't want to see your fellow mm. woman yeah. or girlfriend going through the same thing. So whatever you can do, you would want to, to assist just so that they can have that comfort and ease. Because going through that period of heavy menstruation, painful menstruation, it's... It's something else, mm. and it's not something you'd want to have another woman go, go through. through. So whatever you'd want to do to help give them that level of ease, you'd mm. want to do it. But then, when it comes to medication, as much as possible, let's try to not do that, even <laughs> though it's coming from a place of care. <laughs> I agree. Right. I would like us to touch on the intake of sugar, because we've heard how it mm. could impact. But let me just go to um, Asses here, who's doing amazing. <laughs> but I'm going to... Uh, Find out for, I, I just want to find out. So there are projects that some, you know, um, politicians, <coughs> young women who have a backed on, um, just distributing um, the, the the sanitary pads yeah. to areas that they can they yeah. can reach. We've seen Honorable Jocelyn Tete back on one before. Yeah. Um, a couple of you know uh, young ladies in the media space have also been backed on stuff like. Have you done anything like that before with Yeah. Reflow? So um, uh, Reflow is our. our our main thing is your, your well-being is our number one priority because you deserve the best. So um, we aligned ourselves with um, the Florence Mentor Foundation because they are all about the young girl child and the woman, the African woman mm -hmm. and the African girl child. So um, we started last year by doing 200 girls and um, we went to uh, underprivileged areas to mm -hmm. give 200 girls um, sanitary pads for an entire year mm -hmm. because... Um, a lot of the, the donations that I've done, you know, and they're great and they're, uh, they're amazing, just that um, sometimes maybe it might be a pad or two and that might be like a month or two and then that's mm -hmm. it. And that's it. So mm -hmm. we, we wanted to at least try for a whole year and try to sustain that so that the same girls get that continual support through their school so that they, the whole thing is that um, when we heard about the girls missing school because they can't mm -hmm. get a pad, that was devastating. Imagine a, missing a whole school. Imagine a girl who's brilliant, who could be, you know, so great for this country, her, fa her, her family, her environment, and she can't go to school because of a pad. Something that is just a basic thing that we, just like you're brushing your teeth mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. 
It's crazy. So um, we, we're just trying our best to champion it. So this year we're doing um, a thousand girls. We're still on it. We're, um, we're still doing it. We went mm. to Qatar and um, uh, a few other places. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, we've done, we've done, we're mm. doing a thousand girls at the moment. So we've, we just did 500 girls just recently. So, yeah. We're, we're Congratulations. Congratulations. We're good to get <laughs> into that. Amazing. But for a business, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 yeah. But I like I like the charity, yeah, but I yeah. like the money too. Okay, sure, so let's sure. talk about that a little bit. Sure. For a business, you you're putting so much of your 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 returns mm -hmm. in charity. How do you make that back and to continue to sustain the project? How do you intend sustaining it? Well, um, it's a long term plan. Mm -hmm. You can't do something like this in a couple of years or mm -hmm. three years. You know, you have to think about. Um, the long term, because it's it's a change that we're trying to make. Mm. It's not about just making money. Yes, business is important, but um, I think we can take a little bit less profit margin so that we can make the world a better place. Mm. I think that's that makes that's, sense to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, I haven't seen a sentence, but I'm going to touch on that. With <laughs> the, now, let's talk about the sugar thing a little bit. How does that impact um, your... your I mean, we don't want to say sugar is good, but sugar is sweet. You know, sweet stuff is sweet. Someone to say, I mean, I've heard this before. When you're menstruating, you cannot take um, fizzy drinks. You cannot take um, beverages like Milo. Like, I mean, you know those That's a lot breakfast. of things. But you cannot take a lot <laughs> of things because apparently that would impact the flow of your um, menses. And also, um, you know, the cramps might be mm. more. How true is that? Well... Well, in medicine, basically, we do with a lot of research and statistics. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, there hasn't been any significant studies in that regard, okay. so I won't be able to say Let's on authority that. Yeah. that, okay, this is this. But each individual knows themselves, yeah. and some of the foods that we take mm -hmm. definitely would have an impact on our bodies. We always encourage that women should have a healthy high iron diet because during that time of the month they're losing blood mm -hmm. and they're definitely losing some amount of iron so in effect then the average female mm -hmm. would have a lower blood as compared to the male mm -hmm. simply because of that timely blood mm -hmm. donation mm -hmm. that we do mm -hmm. so um, high iron diet would help to boost up your iron in your blood and would minimize some of the symptoms that you'd experience generally, such as the fatigue, the headaches, the dizziness that is associated with this time of the month. Yeah. Also, hydration is very important. Mm -hmm. um, what hydration does is to give the body, the body is basically made up of 75% of water. water. So if mm -hmm. you are denying the body that amount of refill, routinely, you're going to feel even more fatigued. Mm -hmm. your, your, your muscles are going to go into spasms and the uterus is basically muscle. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to go into spasm because you're not hydrating mm -hmm. properly, it means you're going to have more cramps. Yeah. So that also helps to relieve it. It also helps to reduce the headaches that you would experience. Mm -hmm. Basically, your diet plays a significant role, not mm -hmm. just during that time of the month, but your overall outlook. As a woman, yes. and that's very important to, to, very, to note. Yeah. Now, there's this one that I was introduced to quite recently. I'm mm. not very comfortable with it, but tampons. <laughs> How risky are they? What are the risks associated with using tampons? tampons? And mm. uh, <laughs> can, I, can I say something? I, oh, please, please say something. Please say something. <laughs> please so, say something. Um, I'm, I actually want to introduce tampons okay. to, to Ghana because I think for I think the world is changing and a lot of women are catching up with mm -hmm. how things are going. And I think um, pads are amazing. Uh, tampons, I wouldn't say they're something that you should use every single day, but it's helpful in certain situations. Mm. Let's say you're a very, very, very heavy flower and you're in a situation where, let's say you have to be on set, on set constantly for, let's say, four hours. You know, having a, a pad and having to go change lots of times might be an issue. So you could have a tampon as well as a, t a, a pad just to sustain you for those four hours. Do you know what I mean? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Using it that way, I think it's, it works. it's fine. And mm -hmm. it can be very helpful. You know, tampons have been around for a long time, but I think there's a taboo around it. You know, it's very safe, but I think, again, education. Yeah. You know, so... <laughs> but I get the m m medicine aspect of that. Sure. Please <laughs> <We're>, do. <laughs> I mean, everything is good so long as you do not abuse it. Exactly. Um, the issue regarding tampons for most people is the virginity aspect because yeah. you have to insert it. So usually it's taboo here or it's something that isn't very much spoken about because the assumption is that every single person walking a around mm -hmm. is a virgin. Mm -hmm. And so the use of a tampon can be a little mm -hmm. bit of a mm -hmm. dice. It's mm -hmm. more of a cultural thing mm -hmm. as opposed to a medical thing because if you're using a tampon and you're not changing it as frequently 
as you would a pad, or if you're using a pad and you're not changing it frequently, you are still at risk of the same form of infections you're going to get mm -hmm. as you would mm -hmm. a, tampon. a tampon. Yes, the only difficulty is some people don't know how to insert it. Some also do not know how to get it out. Get it out. And so they tend to have that, it um, getting stuck in there and yeah. it becomes um, a medical issue where they need to have it manually removed, removed for them. Yes, and some also tend to forget it and it breeds infection. <laughs> that is basically an avenue for a lot of infection mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, breed and mm -hmm. that is not healthy. That's not very so as healthy. much as possible, we try to discourage people from using, using it. But that them. it's about time that narrative changes. We need more education, education. as opposed Absolutely. to just discouraging yes. Yes. them so that you can have that informed choice. So you know if you're going in for a tampon, this is what you need yeah. to do. That is what you need to know. Absolutely. Not do. Yeah. There's I also think the, the modern mm -hmm. woman, you know, yeah. I, I can understand the, the need for a tampon at times. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. I'm saying. At times. At times. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because I, I, this is me. I find it very uncomfortable. I think that that's. Like, what am I in certain stuff? Like, what's going yes. on here? <laughs> like, just because no, I'm already, yes, no, I, I'm, be, I would you, discourage it from yeah. my level of yeah. it is too uncomfortable. Yes. But then again, I need a lot of education yes. to understand how it works. And like you rightly said, yeah, sometimes I think yeah. it's when also, it's you know, it's the way it's all about how the way you insert it, if you're doing it correctly, exactly. all those things. And so also, think, it comes in sizes. Yes, you need to know the size that you're going <laughs> for, depending on the, the, the flow that you have as an individual. If you're if you're someone who flow slightly, mm. there wouldn't be a need, need to for a, big, a heavy uh, yes. flow tampon. Just like you would choose your pad, it's oh, the same as you would yes. choose the tampon. So those are also factors as well. Yeah. But I'm just saying the modern so women, we're trying to catch up with the rest of the world. <laughs> you know, girls are... Let, let's not catch up with you that. Know. Let's not catch up with that. Okay, people. You'll come and give me a testimony one day. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try. But then there's also the new innovation of yeah. reusable pads. Reusable pads, pads yes. yes. How does that work? How hygienic is that? I, I to be honest with you, um, I don't like the idea of reusable anything, especially when it comes to that area. Yes. Because there's so much bacteria and all that stuff. And I think even in a controlled environment, maybe I still wouldn't be okay with it. But especially in Africa, I'm not quite sure about that, only because, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of the sanitation issues, especially yeah. in the impoverished areas. And that's something that I wouldn't, encourage mm -hmm. personally look i mean <laughs> we're all about sustainability mm -hmm. and it's a it's a brilliant idea when we talk about menstrual hygiene it's not just about providing pads or ensuring that pads are available mm -hmm. we're looking at it in a more holistic manner which means that um, are we making sure they're adequate um, environments where the women can change safely do, um, do they have access to these um, hygienic conditions? Do they have access to portable water? Because if we're talking about reusable pads, um, do they have access to water? Do they have mm -hmm. access to soap? Mm -hmm. How often can they change? How often can they wash it? So these are some of the things that need to come into play mm -hmm. because um, reusable pads in improvised areas would actually be very, very good because they do not have access to keep buying these pads every single time. So what are some of the things that can be done to ensure that um, reusable pads can be used in these areas. In a where hygienic enough. In, under very hygienic conditions, mm -hmm. teaching them how to change their pads, how to wash it, how, um, providing water for them, soaps, making sure their, their environments are clean, hygienic enough to ensure that they do not end up with infections mm -hmm. associated with some of mm -hmm. these things. So I think it's more of a bigger picture that we need to look into. Yeah. But um, in the future, it's definitely an idea that is worth giving a thought so that um, we can ensure that these areas yeah. can have access to some of these things. So that if we don't have people showing up for them as exactly. much as they like Re Reflo yeah. is doing now, yeah. then they yeah. have something to exactly. hold them together. I'm going to go back exactly. to you with a guest to Reflo. Now you um, <laughs> are one that I'd say is saving the girl today. It's yeah. helping make the system a bit agree. more. Listen, <laughs> we're talking about you before you yeah. walked in. I, I think it's a brilliant thing you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're doing, but then when it comes to the pricing, we want to talk about. We've talked about the taxes and we have <laughs> screamed, yelled, cried about the taxes on sanitary part. And then we're talking about the pricing because, again, it, it's the taxes that will make yes. the prices skyrocket. Yes. And so you're looking at how you're sustaining the business because I am I'm so concerned about mm. the business being sustained because what you're doing is great. So we I need to make sure that you don't have to it. restart yes. the fourth yes, time. Yes, of course. But I'm, I'm always looking for ways to 
be to stay sustainable. You know, yes. it's, it's it's part of my daily thoughts. Love you it, I mean? love it. Because but how, how much, so how affordable? How affordable is? I think you can buy one for twelve cities. Okay. Yes, you can That's buy one for twelve. Good. Depends on the area, I think. Mm. You buy one for twelve cities. I think the highest I've seen it is fourteen cities. Oh. Somewhere, so they're That's, affordable. That's good. Yes, and they they have free panty liners. Yes. Three free panty liners. There's a a, um, a feminine wipe in there as well. Free feminine wipe. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Oh. <laughs> yes. Let's see. Let me. Now let's see now. <laughs> it's time to see my referral parts. So, I'm gonna, so this is the gold one. That's the that's for the let's say standard flow. If you're not too heavy, and this is for the heavy extra flow. Extra long, yes. Yeah, extra long and extra heavy. Now we're we're going to have a look at this. Now you have it now. Yeah, there you have it. Reflow, right? Yes. Reflow. 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 <laughs> yes. Reflow. <laughs> Reflow. <laughs> Reflow sanitary pads. And we're going to look at how to, you know, we're going to demonstrate how cool. to use it. We're going to talk about all about this pad and what you have in there and every other conversation cool. regarding menstrual hygiene right here on the show. We're going for a quick break. When we return, the conversation continues right here on The Dish on MX24. We'll be right back. Your favorite evening talk show is back on your screens. Yeah, welcome back uh, right here to The Dish right here on MX24. My name is Miriam Udua Kamenta. I'm your host. I have two beautiful ladies in the studio. We've been having great conversations around menstrual hygiene. And so if you join, if you were part of the show since we started, uh, you, I know you're learning, but if you're just joining in, you made the right choice. And I want to say a big thank you to Decazon for giving us this beautiful set. If you want that, ho that house to feel like a home with furnitures that are breathing, breathing class, Breathing elegance. You know, you know how the females love it. Mm -hmm. Just run, run to Deco Zone. They have all the beautiful pieces for your home to look like, your house to look like a home, okay? And come back to thank me later. I want to say another big thank you to Betway Cabo um, Coffee, Flora Tissue, Tango Washing Powder for being a part of this beautiful family. Now let's get into it. The big elephant in the room, not just an <laughs> elephant, the big <laughs> elephant in the room is the education bit. Yes. I think that it, uh, if we sum summarize the entire conversation, it bothered down to the education. The education. Yeah. A lot of women or a lot of mothers do not initiate the conversation mm. on time. Sometimes it's out of, I don't know. I, I, don't, know I don't know if it's it a cultural is. thing. I think it yeah. is. But it, the, the conversation is not initiated early enough. So it, mm. it happens to you mm. and sometimes it's like, um, reactive yeah. right. position Advice. that parents say, yeah. okay, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but nothing about what it, how, what to expect. What, mm. how yeah. it could impact your entire yeah. life, what has changed yeah. with that flow. Mm -hmm. How could we amplify that conversation of education, especially between the mother and daughter? Well, just as we're doing now, mm. by talking about it, we reduce the, the secrecy about it. Mm. And definitely, if a little girl who is watching us today would have questions, you definitely go and ask the mom that, oh, I have not experienced this. When should I expect it? And then the conversation starts. But it's important that we encourage mothers, sisters, aunties, um, tutors at school to engage girls and boys alike mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the issues regarding menstruation and everything women's health. So we've already started the conversations yeah. and I'm sure definitely as time goes on, it it's something easier. that will trickle mm -hmm. down and will be much easier to talk about. To, to talk about. I think I would just encourage every female adult who has a niece or a daughter or a young cousin or just remember that you, your, your life, the way you live your life and the way you advise these young girls, are you are also part of their mm -hmm. growing up. Mm -hmm. So if you see that maybe the mother is feeling a bit uncomfortable, you can also maybe out of Initiate respect, maybe talk to the, wife, the, the mother and say, okay, if, if it's okay, I'd, I'd like to, I just told her this today about her menstruation, she'll ask me questions. And then talk to those young girls, you know, because they need women to look up to. We don't have a lot of female role models that, um, you know, are ripe in our lives. You know what I mean? Not just on TV or whatever. We, you know, we all can play a role mm -hmm. in educating these young girls, Absolutely. even if it's your daughter's friend, your friend, sorry, your, your friend's, friend's daughter. daughter. Yeah. Your you know, daughter. you can yeah. you can help. You can do just that little bit, and it does help. We're all a community. You know, we have to fight a lot of things as women. So at least if we have someone to look up to, mm -hmm. you know, so we we are older, so we yeah. can we can start. 
We can all start. All of us can start. Still on the education bit. Mm -hmm. I think that um, the reason why a lot of young people, it, me included, um, find it uncomfortable to talk about is how the entire thing is introduced to you. It's like yeah. it's, a, it's a taboo. Don't tell people yeah. you cannot do this, you cannot do that. But the secrecy is also breathing yeah. unhygienic decisions mm. that young people yeah. take. And so with, the, with it being a very um, open space where mm -hmm. everybody can mm -hmm. talk about it, we can get help with even educating people on how we should keep it very hygienic, even when you're in that space. Now, with people with very limited resources, how would you advise that, you know, with Reflow coming on board, mm -hmm. um, helping and distributing these uh, uh, sanitary pads is a great thing, but not every community has it. So someone is watching us from very far away, and and they want to keep it hygienic, even with the little resources. How do how do we go about it? Well, hy hygienic being hygienic during that time of the month is ensuring that you are changing your pads as frequently as you can. Ideally, you should change your pads three to four times in a day. But then we are looking at the cost of the pads. We're looking at how long. The, the duration of the menstruation mm -hmm. is, and these tend to pose certain t challenges. Um, however, that notwithstanding, you're still going to menstruate. Mm -hmm. So it's important to have someone you can speak to, mm -hmm. um, try to have access to sanitary pads. I mean, Reflow is doing such an amazing job yeah. in trying to provide um, san free sanitary pads to these communities. Mm -hmm. um, keep in a hygienic environment, washing, ensuring that you're having your bath mm -hmm. twice a day, morning and then evening. Um, and then also not inserting other things in there. We have so many things that are going around um, in the market, on the internet. People are selling different, mm -hmm. different things as much as possible. If it's not broke, like we always say, if it's not broken, there's no need to fix mm -hmm. it. So once you're going through that period, I know it can be quite tough, it can be quite difficult, but mm -hmm. visit someone who is a professional mm -hmm. in trying to navigate the challenges associated with heavy menstruation and heavy um, and painful menstruation. We tend to get all of these things that people are selling because, okay, we want a quick fix, but there hasn't been much studies in these things and it's important that you visit a professional. So if you feel like you're overwhelmed during that time of the month, speak to an adult and have them send you to a healthcare provider who would assess you who would give you the right medications that you need to ensure that at least that time of the month is made somewhat easy. But having your bath twice a day is very important. Now we're, that's a different conversation because you have to look at access to water, sanitation, all of those things. But um, having your bath twice a day is very much important and changing your sanitary pads as frequently as possible is also very important. Also, the kind of underwear you use during mm -hmm. that time of the mm -hmm. month is very important. very important. We advocate for cotton panties because these are more absorbent as opposed to the nylon, the lycoris, mm -hmm. and all of these mm -hmm. other materials because these tend to just keep the moisture stagnant in that area. It's not absorbent. So um, using cotton panties really helps, especially during that time of the month. Mm. So these are a few things that can... No, when we're, when we're talking about the panties, I'll let you stay over there. Some people <laughs> recycle the pants. Like, mm. one pants for the entire seven days. Oh, wow. Yeah. You've never heard that? Oh, my God. Oh, okay. So but which I, I means it's wrong. I can't even imagine. It's completely wrong. Because... The, uh, so the idea is that I haven't stained it, and there's already, you know, a sanitary pad in it. But then you're sweating. Yes, but then you're all the sweating. bacteria yes. and the dirt You're inside sweating the during that time. Mm. Every... The, you don't need to have to stain it. Because just because you cannot see it with your eyes does not mean it's not stained. It's not stained. Yes. If that is so important, then use two. Wash one and then sort the other. Yes, too. so it's accessibility okay. is also a challenge mm -hmm. because I definitely believe that those who tend to do that, either mm -hmm. one, are not aware mm -hmm. of the health implications mm -hmm. associated mm -hmm. with doing that or they do not have the means to purchase yeah. more than one panty. And that is more of a difficult place to be. A difficult to place be. to be. Yes. You can't advise too so, much when you're in that space. I mean, space. the conversations have already started just yeah. as we're doing yeah. here. So as we talk more about it, we get a lot more of the pro We become a lot more aware of the problems associated and then we are able to help where needed. Absolutely. We are now, trying to tackle also lots of issues, um, things like this as well. Yeah. So we also work in every day trying to research and find exactly. different ways to bring different products that might be easier for some yeah. people to use. So... 
We're constantly tr thinking Love about the that. woman all the time. Reflow so. is here to save the lives of women. I'm <laughs> yes. telling you guys. I'm telling we're you trying, guys. It's not even trying. a joke. It's not even a we're joke. Trying. Now let's go back to you and your business. Uh, I mean, Ganyete, let me tell you, our nature is that when we are looking for something, we have a mental picture of what it is that we're looking for. So if it does not Thank appear you. in that picture, in that manner, yeah. we are always very, you know, fussy about it. Yeah. What, was, what was the initial reaction of Ghanaian? Did you, how did you handle the feedback? What were some of the negative feedbacks that <laughs> almost made you say that, you know, I'm packing my stuff, I'm gone. I'm going for the third time. <laughs> this is it's quite a funny thing because literally I would sit by my desk. Mm -hmm. The salesperson will come and say, they said you should change the color. They said the packaging is too small. They said, uh, you know, you have to make this bit longer. You have to do the, oh, every single thing <laughs> in the book of how I should change this to be like the ones in the market. Yeah. And I literally had to say to them every single time, this, I made this exactly the way it is because it is the best for everybody. Mm. This is soft. It is mm. comfortable. It is thin. It is highly, highly absorbent and can last up to 10 hours in some cases mm. with no, none of those smells because it's breathable. So many things about this pad. It has four wings so that you don't, when you lay down and sleep, especially the heavy ones, mm -hmm. you don't spill in your, your underwear at the back. Yeah. Yeah. All those things have been thought of. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, and I had to educate them, you know, again, just keep going, just keep going back out there. <laughs> just tell them, show them, yeah. show them why it's better. Feedback didn't yes, push you yeah. into the place no, of no, 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 what no. they told you to do. But this is how it mm. always is. If, if people don't like change, and that's the problem. And sometimes it might be something way better for you. But you, you know, I wanted to keep this one. I wanted, you know, I mean, so there could be something so much better for you. So you just try it. But obviously, again, because of the economy, it's difficult to say, oh, let me just go and try a path for this month. Yeah. I understand. But, you know, listen to all your friends who've tried it. Everybody who has tried this pad mm. will tell you it's literally, they're surprised that a pad is this good and yeah. this thin. I'm your next customer. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get into it and how it works. So we have two different types. Yeah. So we're going to give a live demonstration <laughs> of how, because again, we're not only just talking about it. Yeah. We want our young girls who are watching, who by the way, we've we've reached out to, to watch the show, mm -hmm. to learn. Okay. Those who haven't been introduced to sanitary parts yet, yeah. because they've probably not started flowing, mm -hmm. we want to teach you how to do it, especially with reflow, how it is going to be used. So okay. you're going to help me. Sure. Doc is... Who, who's I taking have it? the heavy flow. Okay. So do you have the heavy flow. Yes. Okay. And this is... Um, <laughs> this is the gold pad. This is what? This is the gold pad. Gold pad. This is for pad. standard flow. Oh, standard. Yeah. Oh, so we have the heavy flow in yes. gold. Yes. Wow. Yeah. The golden girls. Yes. So which one is the front? Is this the back? First, it's easy to open. <laughs> I'm going to say that. And I love the packaging. Okay, yeah, there you have it. That's the front. Okay, right? so open. this is the front. Okay. And that way. We'll make this the front. Okay, sure. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So, so, you, so you can see if you've got like the green and the blue. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the green is the day pad, which is for lighter flow. Okay, so let's zoom into this a little bit. Yeah. So you can see the sun. You, you'll know by the sun, and it's green. So ah. it's the day pad, yeah. Yeah, that's a, this is a day pad in yes. the reflow pack. What's gold pack? And this is the... And this is the, the night, night pad. Night the pad. The heavy pad, It's yeah. been indicated on it, so you can't miss... You can't yeah. miss... So the blue one's the heavy one. This is the heavy one. And the one. blue one... And let me, even, let me just open up the pad for you. Okay. Let me open up the green one as well. So this is designed for, let's say, your lighter days. Um, let's say a day before you finish, two mm -hmm. days before you finish, yeah. depending on how heavy you are. And then it has the normal double wings yeah. as it is there, you know. So you know how that goes. Yes. Normal ones, okay. And then you have the heavy pad, which has the four wings, okay. So I was got, waiting for that yeah. to see how that works. So, yeah. so you see? Oh. Mm -hmm. So you've got your normal... So it just sits. Your normal two wings at the top here, mm -hmm. which will sit in your underwear. So I'll just show you that quickly. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need demonstration for. Right. <laughs> so you have so your underwear. Front. This is your front of your yeah. underwear. Yeah. So then you'll put the night pad. So you have your normal wings that you just fold to the back like that. You see that? And then here's the back. So you see, as you sleep, you go yeah. to bed. Yeah, yeah, I can help them fast. As you go to bed, I think oh. I put it too high up. You're a true customer. I put it too <laughs> high up. <laughs> You're a true customer. So then you have yeah. the back wings. Yes. Yeah, so, so then even, even if it's like yeah. this, you can still fold it around the side here. 
You see? That gives you like a really broad. So you have that broad. So it does. It doesn't shift. It's not moving. It's, it's just no, 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 no. It's it was. It will stay right there. So I actually put it a bit too high. So it's just here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so like then that. you'll see it lay in your panty like this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There you go. So you see that oh. back bit here. Gives you that extra bit of liquid when you're laying down. Mm -hmm. So you can trickle to the sides and you won't get that staining in your on the side panty. of your panty. Yeah. Oh my God, that's amazing. There you go. <laughs> now, another thing I would like to touch on is <laughs> the panty liners. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say this on this television station. And it's, <laughs> if, if they kill me, I die. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I'm a very good girl. So I, I, I pack a few things when I'm going on trips. So I'm, I'm speaking to this guy. We go on a trip, mm -hmm. and then he sees a panty liner and in my stuff. Pad. And he's like, you're very, very clean. I knew I chose oh, the best on the market. Oh, Don't ask me if you are still together or not. It's none of your no. business. <laughs> <laughs> it's none of your business. Oh, but panty yeah. liners. Mm -hmm. A lot of people do not know the use of panty yes, liners, yes. whether before or after yeah. menstruation. Yes. But let's talk about so even after. on a daily on a daily yes, basis. Yes, yes. I'll let you touch on the daily basis, but I want to you to touch on the use after mm -hmm. yes. menstruation. Because you have like how many? Three? Three, yeah. Which yeah. is very three. perfect for after, yes. yeah. exactly. after three days after yes. your menstruation, you need it. Exactly. Panty liners. And then this is the, the, the feminine, the feminine wipes. wipes. People yeah. don't also know why yes. they need feminine yes. wipes and feminine wash. <laughs> They're like, don't Thank stop you. inserting things. I'm like, you. guys, feminine wash. It's, We've it's, got feminine wash coming for you, my darling. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's very <laughs> essential. But then tell us the use of these two after okay. your menstruation. So when you're done, obviously, when, you're, when you get to the point where even the day pad is a bit too much, you don't need that anymore. Then you have the panty liners for maybe the last day, the maybe spotting, last two days, yeah. you have that little spotting at the end, yeah. you know, where you know you need something. Yes. Can't mm -hmm. have tissue there, not good. So you know, it shouldn't this, go into your panty. No, and it shouldn't touch your panty, no. Yeah. So you have this, you can keep it there for a few mm -hmm. hours, change it again, change it regularly so that you know you don't get any of that. Of, of the of the <laughs> then the wipes. <laughs> then the wipe also is great for like spillage, a bit of spillage, you know, maybe in some corners, you know, you clean it up, yeah. you know, sometimes just to clean extra little excess around, make yeah. yourself fresh mm -hmm. and you start again, put your pad on and you go. Yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about before. Before, you know, the, so on a daily the, basis, on a daily basis yeah. Yeah. using panty liners. Educate my viewers on that. Oh, panty liners is very good. A very something every girl should have. Every girl, every woman should be using. Um, simply because the vagina is lubricated. It has discharge in there, um, healthy discharge, which sometimes tend to seep out. And once you have a panty liner, it's able to catch it and it will not stain your panty. So, and you would be able to see what the color of that discharge is, if it has any smell or anything. So panty liner is actually very, very good to use on a daily basis. Mm. Now, so when it comes to um, keeping um, ourselves clean before Tidy, and after yeah. menses, are there any medications that you, we could be taking that could help a very healthy, you know, <laughs> menstrual flow? And even after, keep the vaginal area clean or even your immune well, system? Yes, the immune system, basically, you don't need too much mm -hmm. once you are doing what is necessary, such as ensuring you're taking in the right um, nutrients in the right quantities. And uh, we've learned about our macro and micro nutrients. Mm -hmm. It's important that you have all of these in the right yeah. quantities. You're hydrating well. Um, you don't need anything extra. You're exercising, you're eating within the right times. It's only during certain times um, of a woman's age, maybe the premenopausal stages, mm -hmm. um, childbirth stages, that you need something extra. And even with that, you need to consult with your um, medical doctor or your health provider to be able to understand what you're lacking. <laughs> Because the human being is naturally made to cater for itself. You don't need too much to ensure that it's fine. Sometimes we just want to go that extra mile to, and we end up overdoing things. But once you have the right amount of food in the right quantities, you're hydrating well, you're sleeping as often as you, you need to. You sleep. Yes. Mm. You're not overburdening <laughs> yourself. You're hydrating well. You don't need too much. Mm. Um, as for the douches, I'm a little bit on the fence mm. on it. Um, the vagina is self-cleaning, mm -hmm. and so you actually don't need too much. I agree with We that. actually recommend just water to help clean the area. Mm. Anything is extra. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use um, any um, douches and mm. stuff, please... 
consult with your healthcare yeah. provider because these would tend to disrupt the good flora in there and oh. you're only going to predispose yourself to mm. infection upon infection because some of these douches are very harsh mm -hmm. which that area does some not need. Some of them they need. insert yes. for cleaning, right? Exactly, that's, which uh, the area much, does not yeah. need at all mm. because it's self preserving and some people self are very cleaning. sensitive as well yes, so you have to be very careful mm. so usually we don't recommend all of those fancy fancy things so since we're not <laughs> doing all the fancy stuff what then do we eat during the menstrual cycle are there any special uh, vegetables fruits that one should be you know take types of foods that we should be taking during that um uh, during our menstrual cycle so green leafy vegetables lots of fruits to help keep your iron levels good um, and also to help keep you hydrated. Lots of water, get lots of sleep to help relieve or alleviate the um, incidence of maybe fatigue or headaches, dizziness, mm. those kinds of things, yeah. Nothing extra, mm, mm, yes. Mm, if you're feeling overwhelmed, always, always consult your okay. healthcare provider. And make sure you're wearing a comfortable pad. Yes, like. make sure you're wearing a comfortable <laughs> pad because nothing nothing beats that comfort when I'm it comes to you. that yeah. time of the month. You're comfortable that, okay, you're not leaking somewhere else or you're not overflowing. No. Even you sitting here working like this, mm. imagine, yes. you know, in this environment and mm -hmm. then you're thinking, oh my God, I have to go change. And, mm -hmm. How can you, you just, perform to your best? You just You're feel be, that you know, huge rush. Yeah, you need that <laughs> off your off your mind. Yeah. Normal day. Have a great day. Let's go. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very necessary. Yes, now, let true. me wrap this one up with you because we're about to say it very soon, and I'm sad. But yeah. Um, <laughs> so right after the menstrual cycle, I think a lot of women would would attest to this. Mm -hmm. There's this very, very, very offensive, you know, flow that comes right after the menses. What is that? Well, and is it healthy? Is it, is it okay for you to go through that phase? For, for some, it's okay, but it depends on how severe it is. Okay. We usually have what we call that altered blood. It's sometimes brown, um, and then it comes with a certain smell. Also, your activities during that time of the month impact that. Sexual activities during that time of the month tend to also impact how, what you experience towards the end of the month. So these are yeah. some of the things that you need to take into consideration. And it depends, I think, yeah. also uh, contraception. Contraceptive use, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That also can affect yes. what the, the, the level of the way you're, it is. The way, and also, <laughs> I think your whole cycle in general. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. use, so there, there are several things that impact your menstruation. Yeah. Use of contraception, your age. Um, environmental factors, all of these all play of these. a role. Yeah. But we shouldn't be too worried when Don't you Don't be too worried, but if it's um, certain things to look out for, how offensive is it? How mm. much is it? What is the color? Yeah. These are certain things that you have is to Is it like a standard for. color I suppose to Usually look like? Usually it's, it's altered blood, meaning it's brownish. Brownish, yeah. yes. Okay. So if it's not that brownish, yeah, you need to discuss, look, discuss yeah. it. Mm. Now let's go to Ring <laughs> Flow. <laughs> The business that I, if I had money, I would put into this business, oh, okay? Amen so to that. Amen to that. Money that put into that. But what's the fu what does the future hold for Reflow? Um, your business and... I think for me, I want everybody to have the great, the best products everywhere in the house. Whether it's, you know, toilet roll to, mm -hmm. you know, washing your floor, sanitary pads. Yeah. Everyone should have Reflow's products because I feel like we need um, a brand that we can all hold on to and trust and say, mm -hmm. you know, when I buy this, I know that it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. It's not because when I when I came here, I realized that lots of people were saying, oh, is this real? Did you is this a, an original uh, yeah. product? Thing? Yes, because it's not a name brand. Like because or maybe it's something yeah. that you just they just brought in for a little while and then you yeah. can't find it again. Yeah. But all these things. So we need a brand that we can hold on to that we can say is ours and it's from, we're going from to our seen. homeland and we're, yeah. we're, you know, we're doing great things and yeah. we're, all, we're all using these great products and awesome. we deserve them because awesome. you know, we awesome. do deserve the best. Awesome, awesome. So I love that. So we're definitely going to be seeing Reflow around for a very, very long so time. Until after I'm dead. <laughs> until <laughs> after you're dead. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. very important. Um, your final words to, to our viewers? I, um, I would just like to say, ladies, don't be ashamed of your menstrual cycle. Um, be proud of it. It's what makes you a woman. It gives you a lot of power and um, <laughs> just make sure that you um, educate yourself and make sure that you have the best experience you can when it comes to your, your period. So use the best products, use the reflow sanitary pads and take care of yourself and um, enjoy being a woman. Mm. Enjoy being a woman because you're amazing. Mm. I love that. 
Just say yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that name of you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, yeah. for me, it's, it's quite simple. Um, to the ladies, just as we've spoken so much about it, there's nothing shameful about having your menstruation. Um, it's not something you should be shy of. It's not something you should feel embarrassed about. And if you feel at any point overwhelmed, there are quite a lot of resources available for you to explore, for you to educate yourself. And if you find that you do not understand something or you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, always speak to someone. We are there to help make your time of the month as easy as possible. Consult with us and then we can help you understand some of the things that you find difficult to understand. Awesome, awesome. Now, for, if someone wants to sell your products, how, how do they connect okay, with you? Okay, so just uh, they just need to call the number on the side. is 055-111-1169. Okay. And you can go online as well. We're, at, yeah, um, we're on Reflow. Uh, at Reflow LTD or ReflowLTD.com. But the number is easier. So 055-111-1169. Awesome. Yeah. And also, how do we connect with you, Doc? Via my social media platforms, okay. you can always send me a message and I shall respond as soon as I'm she able to see it. She usually does respond. She's, yeah. she's good with that. Not like some, some people <laughs> that I have. She responds. Like, so I want to say a big thank you to Decozon for giving us this beautiful space to be able to have this beautiful show. Big yeah. thank you to Decozon. If you want that house to look like a home, to feel like a home, just enter into their shops. They're at Wager. They're in East Legon. Just get onto their social media. You get the location and enter into that shop. I tell you, your home will look like a home. Okay? And another big thank you to Cabo Coffee, Betway, and Flora Tissue. Of course, Tango Wash and Powder for supporting us right here on the show. The show is The Dish. My name is Miriam Udwak Mesa. See you again next week. <laughs>